Hello, I'm Trevor Lewis, and this is another video from the Voyager Middle School STEAM Lab. In this video, we are going to be talking about how to use a for loop. And I'm again in the artist level. I've got a simple loop here that we were familiar with. This one's repeating 360 times, one for each degree in a circle. And what it's doing is it's drawing a line back and forth. It's jumping forward, it's going backward, it's turning one degree, and then it's changing the color. So that's why it's repeating 360 times, because I'll get one line for every degree in the circle. It'll go all the way around the circle. So this is probably what you're familiar with when we're talking about a loop. We also have talked about a while loop. So instead of doing it a certain number of times, we do it until something, was, um, is, until something turns false or until something turns true if it's a repeat until loop. But we have another type of loop, and this is actually, this right here is a for loop. It's just hidden. But a for loop works just a little bit differently. Now, um, depending on which program you're using, your counter might be I, or your counter might be counter, or something like that. But basically what this is doing is it's doing the exact same thing. It's, it's repeating 360 times. But what it's doing is it's setting this temporary variable called I to 1, and then it's counting by 1s all the way up until that variable hits 360. So this code does exactly the same thing, which is why this didn't really change except for the color, right? So this does exactly the same thing as a repeat 360. So why do we have all this complicated language? This is what it would be like if you were learning how to code in C++, you wouldn't be able to just say repeat 360. You'd have to say for an integer named i that starts at 1 that goes up until 360 and increasing it by 1 at the end of each loop. That's what you'd have to say. So that's part of it, but the advantage of this is this i is an actual variable. It has a number, and you can use that number in your code. So let's let's um, let's grab one of these numbers here, like this move forward and jump backward. That amount that's that represents how long the line is. So instead of using that, let's just use i. Let's see, I've got i right here in my variables. So I'm going to grab that one out twice because I'm going to replace both of these with i. So I'm going to move forward by, instead of 100, i. And I'm going to jump backwards, instead of by 100, by i. So now you can see you get really different results. So even though this loop has the same exact code every time, since I'm going a different distance each time, you can see you get a really cool effect. Okay, So that's the advantage. Um, you also can do stuff like go backwards. So let's start. Let's start at 360, and let's go to z one. Let's go to one, and we'll count instead of by one. We'll count down by negative one. I actually, I think it did that automatically. It fixed my mistake. So now I start with a really long line, and I go smaller and smaller until I get down to one. Or I could even I could go from 360 down to 1, but let's count by negative 5. See, I didn't go all the way around. Let's go negative 2. Right? I get half of the circle, but it decreases much faster. Okay? Or I could, let's go from 1 to 180, and let's count by... 0 0.5. So see, now my whole spiral ends up on the screen because my longest line is only 180, but I'm counting by halves, which this is normally not what you would do. Normally what I would do to make this happen is I'd go into math and I'd say, actually, instead of using i, what I want to do is I want to take i and divide it by 2 because I don't like this counting by halves. But you can do it. See, it lets you do it. Let's you do all sorts of crazy stuff. Let's see if I can get that same effect by saying instead of i, I'm going to say i and then divided by 2. And I'm going to put that there. And then on this one, we're going to say i divided by 2 again. Oh, there we go. And we'll put that there. See, I get the same thing. I'm going half as far, but I'm going to start with a half, and then I get to two, and then I'm going to just divide like that all the way through. 
So that's what a for loop does for you. You can go ahead and use this on some of those levels to solve some problems. If you see a pattern in the loop, instead of seeing the exact same thing over and over again in the pattern, if you see a pattern that's increasing by the same amount, you can use the counter in the loop, you can use it in your code, and you can use it to do things a certain number of times or a certain distance. Um, and so that's the power of a for loop versus a repeat loop.